the, the round trip just for Saturday, Saturday evening. We'll be back on Sunday. Um, looking forward to just itching to just get out of it. We're going to do some back roads, but I think most of it will be uh, tar road. And um, yeah, it's raining. It's been raining heavily all night, so we're a bit jittery, but we've changed our plan. So we are staying in a little house this time. Also going to be very special. Red latte for Annelie and cappuccino for Bernie. <laughs> Franschhoek is one of the oldest towns in South Africa and the name Franschhoek translates to French Corner. The name derives from the Protestant French Huguenot refugees that populated the valley since 1688 as wine farmers. Today the town retains a distinct French character and even has its own Bastille festival weekend every year in July where Franschhoek is celebrated as the gourmet capital of South Africa with French food and wine. One of the main attractions in Franschhoek is the Huguenot monument and adjacent memorial museum which depicts the history and settlement of the French Huguenots in South Africa. Franschhoek is truly one of the top tourist destinations in South Africa. Although we had to dodge the rainy weather a bit, we wanted to show you the interesting Jan Joubersgat Bridge, situated in the Franschhoek Pass. It was built in 1825 by the Royal Engineers and formed part of the first hard road over the pass. The bridge is named after the frontiersman Jan Joubert, who died there after an accident at the very spot with his wagon. It is the oldest stone bridge still in use anywhere in South Africa today and was declared a national monument in 1979. Now this has been one of the wettest winters in Cape Town and the Western Cape in many years and it is no more evident than at the Tierwaterskloof Dam. This dam is the largest in the Western Cape and the main source of water for the city of Cape Town and it's been overflowing now for several weeks. So you can see it on the relatively small dam wall here in front, it is overflowing quite significantly. It's well above 100% full. So this is amazing. Um, yeah, Cape Town almost ran out of water um, a number of years ago and it's very good to see it's so full. Yeah. yeah, so that's good. So where are we going now? So now we're going to Genadendal and Genadendal is close to Great Tin. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to explore that area. We've never been there. So, so Genadendal is a missionary town. Mission, missionary. Yes, um, apparently. So we will yeah. go and see. We'll drive by the church.
were so pleasantly surprised when we drove into the lovely town of Genadendal. And I must say, I think there's actually a bit of a gap in my education. Yeah, so we went and looked a bit at the history and, and we found that Genadendal was built on the site of the oldest mission station in South Africa, which was founded already in 1738. Genadendal is also the place of the first teacher's training college in South Africa, founded 100 years later in 1838. Genadendal has really a rich spiritual history and many interesting historic buildings to explore. And we also had the wonderful privilege to meet and talk to Dr. Isaac Bali at the Information Center in Genadendal. Yeah, Dr. Bali, we had very interesting discussions. <laughs> yeah. He was the curator of the Genadendal Museum for more than 50 years. Dr. Bali is such an interesting and colorful character and he can recite poems and tell tales in a very entertaining way. What I find so interesting about Dr. Bali is during the COVID pandemic, he decided to write a book about the history and importance of Genadendal. We found his story, which he also put, has in the book, the story about receiving President Nelson Mandela at Genadendal in October 1995, very interesting because this directly resulted in President Mandela renaming the official presidential residence in Cape Town to Genadendal. So on our way to the old pear tree in Genadendal. Apparently you get insight into life and wisdom for life if you sit under the tree. Let's go and sit. <laughs> Well, Genadendal, what a find. Absolutely wonderful. And you can absolutely feel the history in this place. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say wonderful again, but I want to say wonderful again. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about the beautiful little town of Grayton. In 1846, a wealthy Englishman, Herbert Vinya, bought the farm Walter Frieden in the Oberberg area of the Western Cape. He established an agricultural village and named it Grayton, after Sir George Grey, the governor of the Cape at that time. Now the village of Grayton is well known for its vibrant Saturday morning market, and we had a great time doing some browsing. What a beautiful little town, next, nestled next to the majestic refuge on the Ent mountain range. Thank you for joining us on this trip. In the next video, we will take the road much less traveled around the mountain to McGregor. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And until next time, keep well.